information items and the first first item up in the information items is a Clearview Elementary School presentation. Sherry Ruder is the principal. Sherry. Buenas noches, or I'm learning in some countries, depending on some Spanish countries, depending speaking countries, depending upon the time, it's Buenas tardes. Um, good evening, Board Chair Dahlgren, members of the board, Superintendent Jett. I would like to thank you for this opportunity to share our Clearview proud story with you tonight. I'm proud to say that this is my 30th year in this great St. Cloud School District. And I'm delighted to introduce to you my Clearview guests that I brought with tonight. We have Kaylee Clymer, who is a sixth grade immersion student and part of our student council. We have Ben Schwartz, who is a sixth grade student in the English section and who is also part of student council. I have Patty Clymer, who is a sixth grade teacher and Andrea Coulter, who is a fifth grade teacher. I also know that we have some supporters in the audience and some watching on TV. We truly have a dynamite team. We're going to start tonight with our Clearview Proud video. At Clearview, our students and families and community are always welcome. Um, we have an environment that um, meets all needs. Our parents have two choices for their children. They have Spanish immersion or English for their students. And both have um, excellent teachers and both are superb choices for their children. Our students are involved in student council and our student council members do projects in our building as well as doing outreach or service learning projects in our community and the greater communities around Clearview. We are Clearview Student Council and as student council we do a lot of things for our students, school, community, and staff. Our school has three rules. Be kind, be responsible, and be safe. We are the student council craft committee and this is what we do. We make reefs for the Veterans Day program. We fold programs for Veterans Day, drum hankies for the veterans, and we put math games together for Family Math Night. This is our four-year-old inclusive classroom. We are excited to have kids come to school and learn about um, getting ready for kindergarten. They learn social skills, academic skills, and getting along, learning to be part of a group of kids their own age. We assist the teachers as best we yes, can. Yes, yes. Yep. At winter, we help with clothes, boots, mittens, Yep. Like you. And it is, it's sometimes, it's hard, but it's enjoyable. Yeah. We, really enjoy. we love the kids. And a special piece of the Spanish Immersion Program is that we host Amity interns. Amity interns come to us from the Amity Institute in California, and it's been around for over 50 years. Um, why are Amity interns here? Well, there are four components of being an Amity intern. One is to receive training in the classroom. Another is they are cultural ambassadors for their country. They gain knowledge about the U.S. educational system, and four, they're here to also improve their English skills. Well, I decided to become an Amity because I think here I have the possibility to, to know how the language immersion programs work in your schools. So there in my country we have English immersion schools, here they're in Spanish, but you have successful programs. So I just want to know how do you do or how the teachers do in the classroom to have students that speak Spanish. 
Um, my experience at Clearview was very positive. Everyone knew who I was and knew my name when I went here, and it felt like a family. The Spanish Immersion Program, I think, is a really great thing to be a part of. It has provided me to be fluent in Spanish, and I've gone to other countries and been able to speak with the locals there, and I just think that's really cool. One of the things that we've noticed a lot this year, in fact, is just the, the reading capacity and plowing through Spanish and English books and just really the engagement of our students. The immersion program has been a really good fit for our child. Her um, language skills have increased so much in the last couple of years. Also, her MCA scores are fabulous, and she's been mainly immersed in Spanish, but because of the transfer between Spanish and English, the, her English scores are also very high. They happened to come in video on Wacky Hair Day, so you saw some uh. wacky hair. <laughs> um, Patty Clymer is a teacher that has had her class participate in this next partnership that she's going to talk about, and she's also had her daughter participate in this um, partnership. So she's going to talk to you um, from two different lenses, both as a teacher and a parent. Hi, I'm Patty Clymer, and I am proud to say that I'm a sixth grade teacher at Clearview. I also have a sixth grade daughter at Clearview Elementary. Um, today I'm here to talk to you about one of the partnerships that we have at Clearview, and that is what we call our grandparent program. My daughter has participated, and I did teach fourth grade and participated in this program at one time also. Um, I'd like to just tell you a little bit about how the students prepare. Um, it is a fourth grade program, so all of our fourth graders visit the um, either St. Benedict Center or Talahi Care Center twice a month. And at that time, they meet with the residents there. Um, before they go, they prepare by um, taking books out of the library, reading them to each other, and uh, making sure that they're prepared to read with one of the residents. Then they meet, sit with one of the residents, read to them, and um, bring along games. And the teachers also prepare some activities, crafts and things, so that um, just is really um, a, a connecting time for the residents and for the kids. Um, the really cool thing about the um, residence program is not just the connections that they make, but that they keep over time. A lot of the kids after fourth grade, they do go back to these residence um, homes, the Talaki Care Center in St. Benedict's, and they'll visit with these residents even afterwards. Um, one other thing that I'd like to share with you is the Amity program that we have at our school. I have participated in the Amity program because my daughter is, um, she's been in the Spanish immersion for seven years. Um, and I'll tell you a little bit about that also because it's been a really great experience for her. But the Amity program is a program where we have um, college age or, uh, yeah, college age students from other countries come to our school. They are from Spanish speaking countries. There's um, seven this year. And they are uh, students who are majoring in education or, or who are teaching in their own countries. And they come here for a, a new experience, to broaden their experience, and also to share with us and our students. What they do in our school is they help with interventions in the immersion program and also um, to share their cultural experiences. We have, um, Kaylee, my husband, and I have hosted two different Amities, and the experience has been just amazing. We have learned from about other countries. We have made connections with them, with their families. We have um, Ubet living with, with us right now, and we plan to um, visit Colombia when and her family because we've made connections with her family in Colombia. Um, we're pretty excited about that. Um, one of the things I'd like to share with you about my daughter's experience is that. Um, when she was in third grade, we were pretty interested in how fluent she is in Spanish because we know that the program is good, we hear the kids speaking at school, but at home, she really, we really couldn't speak Spanish with her because we don't speak Spanish, maybe a little bit. And so we um, took a uh, vacation. Of course, this was a wonderful opportunity for her family to go on a vacation. We visited Costa Rica. And while we were there, we, my husband had an accident. He cut his finger on the, in the web of his hand and was not able to stop the bleeding. 
So it was pretty important. We went to the hospital, and when we went to the hospital, it was all Spanish-speaking, of course. Well, my daughter was with us, and she was able to check my husband in, explain what had happened, talk to the nurse, um, visit while the doctor, the doctor was busy, visit with the nurse while the doctor was busy, and then afterwards um, communicate with what kind of antibiotics is he receiving, what was the procedure, and of course the payment. And, <laughs> and then we were on our way, everything was great, the vacation ended up just fine. So we, have, we found very quickly that she is very fluent, and that was when she was in third grade. So we're just so pleased with the program. Thank you. Thank you. I put this next slide in because it's a picture of um, our new LED sign that is on our front lawn. It was purchased in partnership with our PTA along with Brian Brown, um, and we had it installed this fall. Tammy Delan had helped us uh, with the design and, and the branding of it for our school district. And so we are appreciative for everybody <clears throat> that helped um, us get this sign. We've talked about it for so many years, and so we were so happy to finally have it. It's, it's pretty visible and looks pretty awesome when you're driving by really, really early in the morning or late at night because it's out on our front lawn, and it's, it's, uh, it's got some pretty vibrant colors. So um, we're proud of that, and we want to thank you for that. Um, these are just a snapshot of what we have that come into our school from area universities. Uh, right now, these are our student teachers for just this semester. Um, and we do have several students that come from St. Cloud State, St. John's, St. Ben's. We also have students that come from other universities, and they are coming home uh, to do their student teaching, and they will come to our school and so we have partnerships with those universities as well um, so we're we're lucky because we are far from the college but still we do get some student teachers and we appreciate that um, a couple of mentorships that we have in our building i think you saw in the video grandma chris and grandpa dennis they are foster grandparents at our school um, this is their second year they go into preschool and kindergarten, a little bit of first grade. And they help with just what they said. They help tie shoes, zip coats, um, take off boots, get all the stuff out of the backpacks, or pack the backpacks. Um, they go into the lunchroom and they help open milk cartons or whatever is needed to be done in the lunchroom. So they're just really, um, they're a grandpa and grandma to the preschool and kindergarten students. And um, they come every day with a smile, Monday through Thursday. They come at 8, and they leave between 11 and 12. So um, it's really nice to have them there. On the right side, um, we have Lena, and she is from the AmeriCorps program. And Lena was with us for a couple of years doing some reading AmeriCorps intervention at kindergarten, first, second grade. And then she left for a little bit, and she called us and said, I think I'd like to come back. And so Lena started last week again. And so this is um, sort of Lena's third year, but really two full years. And so she's, and she, like I said, she just started last week. So she's kind of entering into her third year. And um, she helps with some reading intervention, a few students in um, first, second grade right now. I would like to introduce you to Andrea Coulter. She has been instrumental in this partnership and has really built a couple of these programs that she's going to talk about. And so I'd like to give her the opportunity to um, share uh, her expertise and knowledge on these areas. Thank you. Clearview has a wonderful resource waiting to be used, and that is our forest that we have on our land. We, in 1978, the school district entered an agreement with the DNR, and we have our state school partnership forest. And we have a 48-acre forest that's behind the school and along the side. Um, what 
happened was um, the DNR visited us and said, we need to have some help with this because it's right now not a healthy forest. So in June of 2016, a parent committee was formed of about 20 parents, um, some volunteers that are coming in, and we have a vision. And our vision is to have an outdoor classroom. We want to restore the walking and the ski trails that were there at one time. Um, we are hoping to have a kiosk and some lean-tos and benches, and we have some picnic tables that are being donated through the Benton County Sheriff's Department. And um, we're really hoping that we have a, a curriculum already in place with the DNR, and we're hoping that um, sooner than later, it's a 10-year plan, so we're hoping it's not gonna take us 10 years, but we're hoping that sooner than later we can have our students out in the field. Now, we have meetings the second Wednesday of every month, so I'm inviting you to that. And we would love to have you there. We also have cleanup sessions on Saturday mornings, um, twice a month. Our next session is this Saturday from 10 to 12, and then we have one on the 4th and the 11th of February from 9 to 12. And at that time, we just go out, we wear our orange and take down trees and pile stuff up and make rabbitats and do all kinds of um, things like that that are going to make our, our forest healthy. Um, we are hosting a night in the forest on February 10th from 4 to 6. We have an area of the forest already cleared that the students can enter safely with their families and we are going to bring in little fire pits and have a more roast, marshmallow roast and some hot chocolate and there's some, read some books about the animals of the night in the woods. So hopefully, some of you can enjoy us on that event as well. Okay, thank you. Um, targeted services at Clearview is known as Cougar Club. Um, the goal of the targeted services to, is to improve the students' reading and their math scores and getting them ready for their MCA tests. This is our sixth year of targeted services that has been kind of a, a regular session. We've had it before in the past, but it's been in bits and pieces as far as not a continual program that the kids can enter in and out of. And by improving the students' math and reading scores, we just really believe that we're improving the self-esteem esteem and our confidence in our students. We are also teaching the strategies to the students so that they can problem solve and they are successful in their goal setting and their meeting and exceeding the MCA scores. Cougar Club at Clearview has had 91 participants the last session. We just finished a, ses a session in December, and we started another one in January. And right now we're at about 80 participants for our second session, and it's still growing. Um, to qualify for student or target services, the students, uh, we use our test data. And so the parents it have input, and then the teachers use the test data to help them decide if they're going to meet the criteria as far as they're probably just a little bit on the bubble as far as mastering their skills that they need to know for the MCA. So it's kind of a bump up as far as the curriculum and things go. And we have students from first through sixth grade participating. This um, one thing that's really unique to Clearview is our parents have to pick our students up every day. So for a lot of times when we have targeted services programs in town when I was involved, the buses will take them home or they'll have a different way to get home um, or walk. We don't have that option out at Clearview, so the parents have to pick our students up every day and they pick them up at 420. But the positive part about this is it allows the teachers to make a great parent family contact with the, the parents. Um, we are able to give them their positives, some of the things we need to work on. It, it, it just builds a great community. We're a very, very tight community out there. The last thing I'm going to talk about today is a our Clearview Student Council, which one is, I'm sorry, I didn't watch you. No, you're there. Oh, it's, it's right, right there. there, I'm sorry, my mistake. Um, the Student Council, we sponsor quite a few events throughout the school year. We have a school store and our school store is open on Friday mornings, and it's basically open for about 15 minutes once a week. And during that time, the students bring money from home or they can earn Cody cash, which is a part of our positive behavior program. And so the teachers, if they catch them doing some things, they can put their name in for a drawing and get a, a coupon to spend at the school store. And the items range in price from 25 cents to $2. And rarely are they $2, but once in a while we have it at that price. 
What happens then with the money is that the money goes back into the community, and so that's our funds distribution on the screen. We have about 40% of our total end-year budget goes back to the veterans. Um, we have our beautiful Veterans Day program. We do gifting. Um, sometimes we make blankets. Sometimes it's another community event that um, we need to sponsor that our school students vote on. And so it's not always um, the same thing every, every year. 30% goes back to our families or our community needs. Um, our program is, our store is um, housed through our PTA, and so it al allows us to have that parent connection also. And so if we have a family that had fire, a fire and has lost everything, sometimes <laughs> the students will say, we need to buy clothes for this family, or we would like to help them buy something so that they can feel this, the love of our community. And then we have a 20% reserve startup. So every year we have to have something to buy items for our store. And then at the, the end, our 10% is for our end of the year gathering. Our student council typically runs between 25 and 40 members. And so when you have students, we have a, a representative and we have an alternate. But at the same time, if the students have tried, they're on the craft committee, they're on something. They're not going to be out just because they did not get chosen to be the representative or the alternate. So our craft committee is very involved. Our publicity committee is very involved. We have a very intensive student council, and, it, and we're very proud of them. And with that, I'd like to introduce Kaylee Clymer and Ben Schwartz, because they're going to tell you a little bit about their involvement in student council. I just would like to tell you that um, we are Clearview, and we are two programs. So we bought a, brought a student from each program. And so Ben and Kaylee are going to take it over. Um, one will speak to you in English. One will speak to you in Spanish. Hi, I'm Ben Schwartz. I am in sixth grade at Clearview. I am in the English program. I have been in student council for six years, or er, three years. Hi, my name is Kaylee Clymer. I've been in the Spanish Immersion program for seven years, and I'm student council president. We are here to tell you about what our student council does during, during the year. The Student Council is involved with our Veterans Day program. La Programa de, del Dia de los Veteranos. We partnership with Clearwater, Clear Lake, and San Augusto Legion. Asociamonos de las Legiones de Clearwater, Clear Lake, y San Augusto. We welcome community parents and veterans. Se recibe a los padres, a miembros de la comunidad y a los veteranos. Student Council helps by El Cuerpo Estudiantil ayuda con Setting up the gym Preparar el gimnasio Making gifts for the veterans Hacer regalos para los veteranos Welcoming guests to the program Dar la bienvenida a los invitados al día de, del programa. Some students speak, sing, and play instruments throughout the program. Hablan, cantan, y tocan instrumentos durante el programa. Clearview has community outreach activities. Actividades de divulgación en la comunidad. For what? For one activity, we collect food for the local food shelf. Recogimos de alimentos en centros de la comunidad. We build a community in the school when everyone works together. Creamos una comunidad en la escuela cuando todos trabajan en equipo. The food we collect benefits local families and community members. La comida, la comida beneficia a familias locales y a miembros de la comunidad. Student Council 
also sets up a school store. La Tienda de la Escuela. Student council members sell items to raise money. Los miembros del cuerpo estudiantil venden cosas para recordar dinero. The money goes into student council funds with funds which is used for projects and donations to benefit community members. El dinero recordado va a un fondo que se utiliza para proyectos y donaciones que benefician a los miembros de la comunidad. Student council members count money and keep a ledger each week. Los miembros del cuerpo estudiantil cuentan el dinero y apuntan la cantidad semanalmente. We are involved with American Education Week. La Semana de la Educación Americana. Student, student Council decides on a dress-up day is to celebrate our education. El Cuerpo Estudiantil decidió un día de disfraces para celebrar nuestra educación. Members dress up and set an example for other students. Los miembros se disfrazaron y fijaron un ejemplo para los otros estudiantes. We help create a strong Clearview community for our staff and students. Se ayudó a crear un sentido de comunidad más fuerte para la plantilla de la escuela y los estudiantes. We help put together safety buckets. Cubos de emergencia. We created the safety buckets. Se crearon cubos de emergencia. The buckets contain supplies a classroom may need in case of an emergency. Los cubos contienen materiales y provisiones que, se, que una clase puede necesitar en caso de emergencia. Um, at this time, I'd like to thank all of them for helping out and move on to our Clearview data. Um, this is a snapshot of our Clearview demographics, 469 students, and so you can see the makeup of our students. We also have 40 preschool students, three and four-year-olds. They are not represented in this circle, um, but that's just K through six. Um, our free and reduced lunch population as well as our special education population. And if you take a look at the past three years of our free and reduce, we had a very slight decline over the past three years in um, free and reduced lunch. And as well as special education, a slight decline over the past three years. This is a snapshot of the past three years of our math scores. Clearview is the orange. And our reading scores, and again, we are the orange. And this is just um, our PBS Proud. Um, our PBIS team, our positive behavior support team, works very hard to recognize positive behaviors and implement positive strategies throughout our building to recognize those behaviors. And this is the makeup of our students, where the green represents st students that have had zero or one referral to the office. Um, yellow would be uh, two to five, and red would be six or more to the office. Our student attendance, just shy of 96%. And then um, I just added these pieces in there. Our parent fall parent-teacher conferences were 97% of our guardians attended conferences. And then just kind of a um, piece of information we're always interested in is to date, well, when I made the PowerPoint to date, um, we had over 1,500 hours of volunteer hours uh, could be field trips, could be coming to um, volunteer in the lunchroom, 
or come to um, <coughs> read um, different things. Um, a typical year, by the end of the year, we will have over 4,000 hours of volunteer service. It truly picks up in April and May because those are big field trip times and parents like to come and go on field trips um, with their child. Um, just a proud highlight data that we really wanted to show you is that 83.1% of all of our third graders were, were proficient on the 2016 Math MCA. 73.3% of all of our fifth graders were proficient on the 2016 Reading MCA. So we had some areas that we really did have some shining. Um, some cool highlights that we wanted to touch upon is we're pretty proud that our families have choices. They can choose the English, they can choose the immersion, and we're proud of both of our programs, and we're proud of the students and the staff in both of those programs. Um, kind of a fun um, statistic, the longevity of our staff, when we counted up all of their years of service, the teaching, licensed teaching staff, we have over 370 years of licensed teaching in our, in our building. We also tend to have generations that pass through Clearview. Students, their parents, um, grandparents, and maybe all did not attend in the existing Clearview building. Um, they may have gone to the Clearview building uh, before it was moved to where it is now. And then um, another fact that we're pretty proud of is we were voted among the top 12 elementary schools in central Minnesota by Great Schools, and that website is greatschools.org. And that was in um, our Sherburn uh, Tribune last spring. Hmm. Um, one thing that we uh, really uh, work hard at is called Gamelan. And Gamelan is um, an Indonesian um, music and dance. And we bring Gamelan to Clearview. Um, this is our 17th year host of Gamelan. Uh, in its very infancy stages, we would bus students uh, to St. Cloud State to have this cultural experience. And over the years, Clearview has purchased and you can see some of the instruments down in front of the stage there, and there are much larger instruments out front that, that are very hard to see. Joko and Tri are the Indonesian artists that come, and they teach our students in fifth and sixth grade dance, as well as how to play the Indonesian instruments. And it's a two-week residency. At the end, there's a culminating um, performance, and we do two of them because they're so highly attended and our gym gets pretty crowded. So we do one in the morning, one in the afternoon. All fifth and sixth graders are involved. And um, at the end uh, in May, we host what we call a senior breakfast. And anybody that is a senior in high school that has gone through Clearview comes back for what we call the senior breakfast. And we typically will have between 30 to 40 seniors come. And we ask, we go around and we ask them to share memorable moments um, from Clearview. Nine out of 10 of them will say, Gamelan was one of my favorite experiences. So we know that it has an impact on children and it's something that we work very hard and we're very appreciative of our PTA because they pay for this residency and our kids gain an and a very rich cultural experience. So again, I'd like to thank you for allowing us to share our Clearview story. Thank you. I'm going to open it up for questions. Bruce. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, and thank you, Sherry and <coughs> staff, and uh, is it uh, Ben and Hallie, right? Great job with the... Uh, okay. Um, I just finished uh, a two-year stint as the board liaison to Clearview. And uh, just would want to make a couple of observations. Uh, I think that every one of our schools uh, in this district has a great staff, provides great educational opportunities to kids, um, and, um, and is unique, certainly uh, uh, has unique characteristics. And there's three things that I would mention that, that stick out in my mind as I think of Clearview uh, in terms of the uh, 
program uh, at Clearview. And one, obviously, would be the immersion program out there, uh, the tremendous impact that that has had and the great uh, opportunity that it provides for students. And now, with next year's expansion for all students to some extent, uh, with the uh, becoming familiar with the Spanish language. Uh, the second thing would be the Clearview Forest uh, project. Um, it, was it 48 acres? Is that what uh, that forest is out there? That really is a unique um, resource that the school has. And I know that Ms. Coulter has been doing so much work on that uh, since last summer uh, in uh, developing that resource that over the years has kind of grown over. And, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing it. Both of my sons came through Clearview. Uh, as did I before it was Clearview. It was the old Clear Lake School at the time. But, um, but what a great resource to, again, recapture and take advantage of. And uh, having been uh, in attendance out there at meetings, I am aware of the tremendous amount of work that's already gone into it and um, how much more is going to take place before it's completed. But I would just, from the board, want to say thank you for the great effort that you're putting into that educational resource. And then the last thing that I would mention that sticks in my mind about Clearview that y you mentioned, I think, um, kind of indirectly, but that's the Clearview PTA. Uh, what, what an impressive group of parents. And you did mention the um, a high percentage of parents who come to conferences and, and those kinds of things, but the number of uh, special opportunities, uh, math nights and, and uh, just uh, skating nights and those kinds of things that are offered through your parents group at Clearview is really a unique and I think a really strong and special part of your program out there. So I would just say, you know, great job and uh, keep up the great work. Thank you. They're a pretty incredible group. They are. Mr. Mollows. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, I'd like to direct my remarks to Sherry and Patty and Andrea and the two young students also, please. I memory doesn't allow me to pull these names up as quickly, but uh, here's what I want to say. Uh, you know, when we sit on a board of education, we, we listen as a governance person. And one of the things that helps us focus as a governance official is, is something called key works. And there are eight elements to key works that if we're that if this person is listening deeply, I'm listening for themes that resonate in those eight areas. And two of those areas tonight you were just uh, smashing the heck out of, I thought. And that's in a good way. I didn't know how to say that. But you were just really uh, addressing those strongly. That's our sixth uh, key work is culture and climate. And our seventh key work is community partnerships. And it just sounds like that is what you are uh, deliberately, purposefully, intentionally creating at Clearview. And I know that's the effort across the district, and we all have another excellent presentation tonight coming up, and we'll hear many, many themes from that excellent school too, Madison. But here's what I particularly wanted to say. Um, um, annually, the uh, Board of Education uh, has the uh, celebration, the Partners in Education celebration. That's coming up now in April. And uh, I heard some things that were going on here tonight uh, that, to me, uh, are pretty strong qualifiers for consideration, nominations. Uh, your Forest Restoration Parent Group is, is something that is very unique, and perhaps that will, you'll consider that as a, as a school nomination. Your foster grandparents, uh, you know, and that, that's across the, the community. That's at Madison, Lincoln, every place. We have great, great older persons that come in and give their time. It's essential, isn't it, to academic achievements, essential to social development. It's essential to so many things. Uh, we talked about your gam gamelon artists. I know these two people. I met them many, many years ago. <coughs> Before I even know they were coming up to this school district, I, I met them in St. Paul, and 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 uh, they've been here since, well, as you said, for a long time. I think that's another indication that uh, 
our schools, and in, in this instance right here, our schools are engaging in developing community partnerships and are purposely focusing on culture and climate. So that was my observation. That's what I heard tonight, and I just want to say thank you very much. It actually just came across our email, the Partners in Education, yeah. so we've started Well, already. we're going to, yep, we got it going now, and we're going to be out there, and uh, we're going to be in your neighborhood talking to you. Right. Thank you. Mr. Paul Rice. I just got two things to say. I was lucky enough to be out to Clearview this fall, helping with uh, student conferences and stuff, and now I know why it was so busy. That was incredible. Uh, second thing, Katie, are you going on the trip for the immersion program, the one they're having? They go in eighth grade. Oh, right. okay. Good, good. Thank you. Good luck. Monica. Muchas gracias por la presentación que nos han hecho hoy. Eh, me alegra mucho que estén aquí. Tengo una pregunta para los niños. ¿Por qué les gusta aprender español? Um, a mí me gusta aprender el español porque, um, porque um, yo creo que me ayuda mucho como con mi aprendizaje. Aprendiza um, en el inglés y el español y um, me ayuda a como comprender el inglés y el español mucho y a, a, a mí también me gusta como ir a diferentes lugares y poder hablar con las personas um, de ahí y sí, a mí me gusta. Gracias. Okay, um, I guess I had a couple of things. Number one for Sherry, uh, you said 97% of the parents uh, participated at the conferences. Is that higher than normal or is that really, an, is that real normal? I think that's average, yes. That's about average. Across the years, if I look at it, it's, okay. yep. I think so. And this year you had parent, the parent goal setting conferences before the school began? Did you, right, did you, right, so I'm talking about the conferences in, that we had in October and November. Right, but I'm just saying yes. before the school year started you had Goal setting conferences. conferences, correct. Do you feel like that had any impact on parents our following parents, through later? Um, our parents loved it. I would say I could have your, I, I believe our teachers um, really found it beneficial and um, revisited it at fall parent conferences to talk about progress for goals and possibly even reset goals for the end of the school year. And we have conferences coming up again the end of February, so we'll revisit those goal setting conferences um, that were established in the beginning of the year and in the fall conferences as well. Okay. As well. okay. Um, my next question would be for Ben. So, so Ben, you're in the English program mm -hmm. at Clearview? Yes. And my, my question for you is, uh, Kaylee spoke quite a bit there, and then when Monica asked a question to Kaylee, she answered, and it was all in Spanish. I didn't understand one word that was said between, all of, between the two of them. And I'm just wondering, as a student in a school where there's a lot of students that speak Spanish, do you find that you can pick up on some of that and you're, you're understanding some of what they're saying, or does it, is it like me? Yeah, like you. <laughs> <laughs> so it doesn't really, you don't really pick up on it just from being around all of those students? Yes. Okay. I was, I was just curious on that and, and how that went. And Kaylee, I, I, it's impressive and awesome at your age that you're able to speak fluently like that and, and have a conversation in Spanish and it'll help you for the rest of your life. So thank you.